Hello everybody, this is Colton with POSGuys.com and today we're going to be taking a look at the Zebra DS3600KD. Uh, this is a bit of a unique scanner in Zebra's catalog. It's somewhere between an industrial barcode scanner and a mobile computer. Uh, and Zebra kind of picked out the best elements from both of those and combined them into one uh, funky little scanner here. It has a little screen, a keypad, and uh, the same form factor as a scanner. So I wanted to take some time today to take a look at the unit. Uh, analyze its appearance, its durability, and then take a look at some of the preloaded features that are built into this unit, because it can do a lot of really fancy, sleek things. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of a longer video, so what I've done is I've gone ahead and broken uh, down uh, the video into some chapters, and there's timestamps in the description below. Take a look at those if there's a particular part that you're interested in. Uh, but without further ado, I'm going to zoom you on in over here and get this review started. All right, so now that we're zoomed in here, uh, let's go ahead and start to break down the look on this unit. Uh, so pulling it out of its cradle here, you're gonna see uh, that it's pretty similar in form factor to some of their Zebra's other industrial scanners. Here I have the 3678, uh, and you can tell that they look pretty similar, except for this guy is a little bit longer. Uh, oops, flip it around that way, it might be a little bit better to see there. Um, but otherwise, pretty similar to their other industrial line of scanners. Uh, of course, the big difference on this is the keypad here. It's a pretty simple keypad, um, 10 keys here uh, for the numbers, and then a little button here for some navigation, uh, and then an enter key, as well as a backspace, and then a function key here, which is programmable. We'll get into that in a little bit. And then this fun or this alphabet key that allows you to um, turn the buttons into, uh, you know, letters essentially and so you can kind of zoom in there you can see uh, the different um, uh, combinations that you can choose from there. Um, outside of that uh, you're gonna find a two inch full color display that's backlit. There's actually a sensor on the scanner so that if you're going into uh, you know very dark environments or very bright environments the uh, screen itself will automatically contrast or lighten and darken to uh, you know show it. And then on finally, on the back, here is a little light bar and you'll see it pop up uh, later on as we go. Uh, it's either gonna be green or red, green for a good signal, or sorry, for a good scan rather, and then red if there's not a good scan. Uh, and of course, there's a beeper accessory here. I've actually covered it with a little bit of tape because otherwise it's really loud. <laughs> um, and then the battery, as always, you can just pop out here. Um, you just kind of flip that switch and you can pop out the battery. So. Overall, a very nice, sleek unit. Uh, cradle, pretty similar to all their other cradles. In fact, I think it uses the same cradle. Um, we have this little guy here. So yeah, pretty solid unit overall. So let's jump on to the next portion here, and that's gonna be the durability on this particular unit. Uh, Zebra notes that the 3600 KD can survive 10 feet drops, or three meters, uh, to concrete, and it can survive about 7,500 tubbles. Uh, you, so you know, if you knock it off the table here, or off a desk, you know, about 7,000 of those. Uh, that's actually an upgrade from its non-screen equipped brother, the DS3608, uh, which was rated for 8V drops to concrete in about 5,000 tumbles. So even with the screen and the extra electronics uh, required for that, it's still doing pretty well. Uh, comparing that to its similar screen equipped scanners on the market, um, it's for sure a pretty competitive product in that regard. Uh, its closest competitor that I could find caps out at about 8V and doesn't actually rate for tumbles at all. Uh, so, you know, it definitely has the advantage there. Uh, environmental ceiling wise, the 3600 also features an IP65 rating, um, which means that it's 100% dust proof and uh, it can be sprayed, it can withstand being sprayed with jets of water from either side. And I'll pull up some footage here that I did of some durability testing. Uh, I threw this thing off a ladder and then knocked it on, threw it against the wall, knocked it on concrete a little bit, and then sprayed it with some water uh, and afterwards, you know, you can see that it still scanned pretty good. So it gets the uh, A plus thumbs up of approval from me in that regard. Um, speaking of environmental ceiling and whatnot, I wanted to highlight something on the cradle here that I thought was really cool. Uh, Cause it's one of the few cradles I've seen that actually has an IP rating on its own and it's rated for IP65 as well. So same as the scanner. So, you know, the full package is pretty, pretty rugged in that regard. Uh, another thing as well, there's like these little um, industrial insertion pins right here. Oh, pressing those and it starts to freak out. <laughs> um, but those are able to withstand about two, uh, 250,000 insertions as well. Uh, those are kind of just small details, but I thought they were worth mentioning. 
Um, and while we're talking about the cradle, it's only natural to bring up charging. Uh, this unit can do about 60,000 scans or about 16 hours with a full charge. Uh, that's actually about 10,000 less than its non-screen counterpart and about 20,000 less than its closest competition uh, that has the screen. So the big question there then is how much is this unit getting out of each of those scans uh, to kind of compensate for that difference? So I'm gonna flip the page here and let's go ahead and take a look at that. So now we're gonna take a moment here to take a look at the scan it engine on this particular unit. Uh, and in that regard, it's doing pretty good as well. Uh, it's upgrade, it has included a 1280 by 960 pixel scan engine, which is actually a slight upgrade from the DS3608 and from its closest direct competitor, both of which cap out at about 1280 by 800 pixels. Uh, practically, what all that means is that this translates to being able to scan from about seven feet away or two meters, depending on the mil spec for the code that you're scanning. Uh, I'll throw up a chart here that Zebra provided in their spec sheet for you to take a look at um, because, you know, it's going to be a little bit quicker and easier than me breaking down each of these things. Uh, but for basically what I can say is that I compare that to some of its direct competitors and overall the 3600 KD beats them out by at least a few inches on the far end uh, of side of things. Um, it's not rated to go quite as close to some of the competition, but you know, in a lot of cases, the far end is really what's important there. Uh, another thing to note is that the 3600 does feature a slightly smaller field of view, both uh, horizontally and vertically, um, but the skew angle tolerance on it is a little bit better than some of the other of its competitors. So in that regards, I would say that it's a draw um, in every way other than the scan distance, which the 3600 does kind of beat out the competition a little bit. Um, one big thing to note about the scanner that's going to be really helpful in warehouse settings is that it has something called PRZM Intelligent Imaging Technology patented by Zebra there. Uh, this is going to kind of give it a leg up when capturing really problematic barcodes, particularly ones that are dirty, damaged, poorly printed, or under shrink wrap. Uh, so to test that out, let me pull this over here. I've actually uh, prepared a little uh, set a little test setup here. I have an assortment of barcodes, uh, some code 39s, code 128, some QR codes, some data matrixes, uh, and kind of wrapped them all onto this board here, along with some like really faded barcodes and wrapped it in a little bit of shrink wrap, uh, just to test. So I'll pull up a notepad document that this thing is gonna be scanning to, and just scanning the code 39. You should see it pulls up right there. And it seems to handle those all pretty well. There we go. Even on these really faded codes, it seems to be scanning them pretty well. It starts to struggle when they get really faded, but this one that's just a little bit faded here um, seems to handle it without really any big issue. So in that regard, it actually scans pretty well, uh, and I'm really, really happy with that. And while we're on the topic of uh, scanning features, I thought that right now would be a really good opportunity to talk about one of the really advanced features that this scanner has that I think is really cool um, that some other Zebra scanners have, but this is particularly equipped to handle. And that's something called multi-code data formatting. Uh, with this feature, basically what you could do is you could take a uh, label like this that has a bunch of different barcodes and with one trigger pull, uh, you can have the scanner scan all the barcodes, ignore the ones you don't want, and then the ones that you do want, you can port them into your uh, software all at once and then parse it out in a way that your software can actually read. So uh, it's a little bit of a complicated feature. If you want to learn more about it, uh, in the link in the description, I've included a, uh, or sorry, in the description, I've included a link to a blog post that I made uh, about the scanner and there's some more information. You could also give us a call and we can get you connected with Zebra reps. Uh, who can help you set it up because there is a little bit of a learning curve to get it going. Uh, but to kind of give a practical demonstration of how this technology works, say you have this uh, you know, barcode here usually, what you would have to do is you would have to scan each barcode, you know, the part number, the serial number, and then the manufacturer number, and they all get ported out here on this notepad document um, in one long string, no enters or tabs, uh, and you know, You'd have to have your people manually go and put their cursor over, fill out everything. It's a whole, it's a whole process. But what you can do here, uh, if you pull up the Zebra 123 scan utility and create a custom configuration folder, again, give us a call if you want some help with this. Uh, we can pull up this one that I've already created using some advanced logic, load it to the barcode scanner, and let's see here. 
Oh, of course, it's giving us a little bit of trouble. That's all right. We'll get it going here. One second, let me cut here. All right, we're back here. So I've got that all away and recorded. So now all I need to do is go back here, click on this, pop it on there. Just make sure, perfect, set that back to human interface device mode. Now, if we pull up the notepad document here that we have before, go ahead and scan this here. Should be able to scan it there and boom, look at that. So you're gonna see here that it's gonna break off the DS3608. It's gonna drop the uh, little 1P notifier there for the part number. It's gonna add a little uh, space there, or sorry, an enter key, enter in the serial number, put another enter key, the February that's found here, dropping the 22 that was in front, and then adding a tab and the 21 there. And you can just continue to do this and it'll keep going. Bam, look at that. What's really cool about this feature um, is that um, with the 123 scan utility, you can actually load configurations into the cradle itself uh, through another tool called Zebra's auto config utility. And with this setup, basically what you could do is you could have two different cradle setups, one in your warehouse and one in like your front of store or checkout area or something like that. Uh, and what you can do is if your front of sale, point of sale application, you know, you just need it to be the straight one scan, that's it. Um, you can load that into the scanner here and then, or sorry, on the cradle here, and then in your back of house, if you wanted to have this kind of setup uh, that we were just going over, where you can scan in part numbers like that, uh, and then the serial numbers and load them into a system, you can load another cradle with that configuration. And what you could do is you could take this scanner, uh, say it's in your front of house and you need a scanner in the back, uh, the back warehouse, you could just take this, run on over, drop it into the new, or to the cradle, and it'll automatically upload with that new configuration. So, you know, really snazzy feature there. Um, and if that's something you're interested in getting set up, definitely give us a call. We can get you set up with that. So I've zoomed this in here so that we could start to take a look at some of the preloaded uh, programs that are uh, included on the scanner. Now, as I had noted before, there are five unique programs. Um, I'll pull up the screen here. So you can see there's a scan and enter quantity function, a scan and enter location, a scan inventory, an out and inside match function, and then a view image function. And then of course, there's a configuration option where you could change the settings on each of these. So uh, we'll start off with the first one on top here, the scan and enter quantity. It's a very simple program. As you can see here, uh, you have the quantity that you can enter. And then of course, the barcode field itself. So I have two different barcodes here. I have a code 39, or sorry, code three of nine and a UPC code. Uh, we'll just go ahead and scan this first guy with the quantity set to one. And you can see on the screen, it pulls up a single quantity of that. Now, if you wanted to change it for any reason, or uh, change the quantity rather, uh, we can just go ahead, say let's change this to five. There's a little green, press enter. And now you'll see that five of those get entered onto the screen there. Uh, so you, you also could do it this way. You could enter five here and then scan the code, do a different one this time so you can see pop five on there, enter. And now, as you can see on the screen, it just popped in a couple more. Now there's no special programming on this particular one, on this unit, uh, so it's all being in one line, but same thing as before, you could enter, you know, using the one, two, three scan utility, you could enter, uh, at, you, sorry, you could add enters after each one, tabs, however much you wanted to do there. So a very simple program, uh, but it's, Pretty cool uh, that you can do it from within the scanner here instead of having to do it five times. Um, the second function here is gonna be the location feature. So the way that this works here, you have the little option on top. So if you press enter, you can, or sorry, not enter, uh, you can start to enter on here. Um, as you can note before, you have the uh, number keys and the letter keys here. So say we wanted to do J7, uh, rack J7 here. You can press the ABC button there you get a little indicator there and we could do J for the one or you could double hit it if you wanted like K or L, kind of like an old cell phone. Press the button to go back, add a seven, perfect. Want one quantity of that and now we'll scan in this code, perfect. And if you press enter, you'll see on the screen that it pulls up, enters a new line enters the number space J7 there. And so that's just a really easy way for it to communicate. 
Uh, we could do the same thing again. Say we wanted to go J7 once again. Oh, enter there. Say we wanted to do, scan the barcode again, and then enter five quantity, enter, and now you'll see that it sends through five of those and then the J7 at the end there. So, uh, you know, just a really cool way to kind of efficient, efficient size of that process. The next in here is gonna be the scan inventory function. And basically all this is, is it's a fancy batch mode. So, you know, you could scan, let me enter some enters on this center here, scan a bunch of codes. Oh, keep scanning them. Throw in even a PDF code here for fun. And now you can move over, press the side button, enter quantity, um, and submit full list. And now, as you'll see, it'll pull up all the different scanners that we did, or sorry, scan. it'll enter all the different barcodes that we scanned right down here. So you'll have kind of that option if that's what you want to use. The next is a scan outside and inside batch function. Basically what that's going to allow you to do um, is uh, scan, say you have like 10 different barcodes on the outside of a box, uh, you know, kind of indicating which items are in there. You can scan all those barcodes and then scan uh, the barcodes inside the actual scanner and then, or sorry, inside the box itself and it'll automatically work. So let's say we have this code, let's try a different couple codes. So we'll scan this guy and this guy and let's pull up this sample barcode sheet, scan this guy and why not this guy? So you have four different codes, right? Perfect. So now you can press enter to be done. Now I can start scanning the inside of the container and it's gonna tell me which ones are included. So we scan this code here, one of match, a four, two is in there, three, and let's say you had a special code, uh, you know, that, or you had another code that wasn't matched. Give it a scan here. Let's try this one, there we go. Don't think that one's been programmed yet into it. Uh, this guy here, and now you're gonna see that it shows one unexpected of four. So if you're to do this again, scan a couple different codes that aren't in there, you're gonna have four unexpected, and now we'll do, scan the final one, and now we can press enter. And afterwards, it'll give you a little test. It'll show you 100% match, flash it red, but then show you what's unexpected. And then if you press the little side key here, uh, you'll get a kind of a readout of all the different things that matched. So just a really quick way, you know, you could do this all with a regular barcode scanner, but this just makes it super quick. Push the enter button and there you go. It'll have that all pulled out for you. Now, let's go back here and training the backspace. Oh, it's not happy with me here. One second, let's get back. There you go, gotta do the function and then the escape key, my bad. <laughs> Still learning here myself. Um, and then finally is the view image function. So I'll have to go ahead and uh, on this computer, change it into um, a different Snappy. It's called Snappy. It's the uh, communication protocol that allows this to send photos. So I'm gonna go ahead, do a quick cut, uh, turn that on and then show you how this works. All right, so we are back now. Um, so what I've gone ahead, done, gone ahead and done is I have changed it to image USB snappy right here. Uh, before it was set to HID keyboard, but I just went ahead and changed it down over to that. And basically what that's gonna allow it to do is send photos now. So if we scroll down here to the very bottom, hit view image, push okay. Now, if I was to take a photo, say this guy, there we go, it'll take the photo. Tell me that the image is processing. It'll take its time. There you go. And now it will show a readout of that image. And if I was to push the enter key here, it'll say image sent. And now you can see it pop up on the screen here. It'll give you a nice little photo uh, right here. And so you can configure that to export how you need. Uh, you could, you know, left click here, save as, and then go ahead and save it from there. Um, so, you know, Again, that's something the most uh, barcode scanners can, zebra barcode scanners rather can do, at least in the industrial line that have the imagers. Um, but this scanner just sort of makes the process way quicker, way more streamlined, just to make your business a little more efficient. So uh, those are the five preloaded features. Zebra does offer a software development kit if you do want to create more options for these. Uh, and if you, know, you ever wanted to change how one of them works, 
you can go ahead and uh, there's a little uh, configuration menu here and you can change all sorts of things about the uh, program. So, you know, no matter what you needed to do, you should be able to get it to, to pull out how you need it. So with that, that'll wrap up the pre-recorded section here. Uh, I'm gonna go and flip the page and we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, some of the fleet utility management tools that uh, this guy has built in because there's some really cool things that you can do with it. So the first really cool feature that this guy is gonna have is something called Virtual Tether. Uh, and it's something that Zebra creates and essentially what it allows you, the scanner to do, is notify the user uh, when the scanner has been taken off the cradle and out of a certain range for a certain amount of time. Uh, other programs, or sorry, other scanners from other manufacturers allow you to do something similar, but usually you, there's a lot of coding that needs to be involved with it. Uh, this guy makes it super simple. Uh, so that's great if you know you have this in like a self-checkout station or something like that and a customer accidentally puts it in a bag or walks away with it. Uh, it's just a really easy way to keep track of your utility. Uh, another cool thing that this scanner has built in, and this is going to be really cool for like supply chain managers, um, is, something, is something called Speed Scan Analytics. Basically what it allows the scanner to do uh, is report back very detailed metrics on every barcode that's scanned. Uh, so that, you know, a warehouse manager or a supply chain manager can keep track of which barcodes are most problematic, uh, which ones are being scanned the quickest, and then the kind of rates and frequencies with that. So that you could really, really fine tune and really optimize uh, the scanner and make sure that it's doing everything that you need it to do. And finally, th and this one is particularly for IT managers, uh, the device is going to come with a remote diagnostic uh, suite of tools. So essentially that's going to allow you to track uh, the health of the device uh, and the configurations that it has, what, what barcodes it's scanning well, um, just so you can really, you know, keep the fleet really managed and up to date uh, and just making sure that you're, you know, keeping all your bases on that. And that's going to be really important for things like uh, event tracking, uh, blockchain traceability, uh, and pilot site ROI generation. So lots of really cool features built into this scanner. Um, so with all of that out of the way, uh, I think it's probably a good time to give my overall impression of the scanner. Uh, I think that it has a lot of really cool sleek features built in and really easily accessible, uh, way more than I've seen a lot of other scanners on the market have. Um, there's some competitors that have the screen and the keypad um, as well, but just the ease of use on the scanner is way better than a lot of things that I'm seeing on the market. Uh, that's not to say that this is a particularly easy drop-in setup. It's far from it. You're definitely still going to need to do a lot of work um, to get it integrated into your setup. Uh, but with you know the utilities that you're going to have available, like the one, two, three scan utility, all the remote uh, monitoring and setting changes that you're going to be able to do remotely. Um, as well as, you know, just the infrastructure that's been put in place to support this scanner, uh, either with us or through Zebra, uh, it's still a really, really great scanner. And if you're looking for something to really min-max uh, and really efficientize your process, this guy is probably the way to go. Uh, and it's great that it, you know, looks pretty nice and it's really durable as well uh, and has solid scan performance. So. Yeah, if you're willing to put in some work ahead of time up front and you, if you have the capacity and the know-how uh, to get this thing running, you're definitely going to see a good return on investment with it. If you're looking for a little more of an out-of-the-box solution that's not going to require so much initial setup, there are other options. Zebra provides a bunch of solutions that are kind of built for that uh, that do similar things. Uh, but if you're interested in those, definitely give us a call or an email and we can get you help. Uh, we can help you get those set up. Uh, with that, our information is on the screen here right now. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Um, and I hope that you will, uh, you know, take a look at it if it's something that you're interested in. Links are in the description below. Thank you all so much. I appreciate your time and I hope you have a great day. Take care.